All right, guys, you ready? We have two situations that we need to look at today. The first one is right here. What if there's a negative in front of there? What is it that we need to do different? And the key is, is that we need to have a, just a plain old x squared. We can't have any coefficient at all when we factor these. We need to, uh, and the reason is that you can have a number out in front of there. So you can have a number out in front of there, but when it's in graphing form, x is all alone. There's no negative in front of there, there's no number in front of there. So it's important that we get to that spot there. So um, the first thing that we do actually is normally if there's a number here, we need to move that first. So that is still the first thing that we do is move that. There's nothing to move, so we leave it the same. And the second thing we need to do is we need to move that. The only way we can do that is to factor it out. Now, you do need to be very careful. Anytime you deal with negatives, so many things can go wrong. So you need to also take a negative out of this one so that if we were multiply it back, we would get exactly the same value. So to get this number here now is exactly the same as yesterday. We take this middle term, negative 6, we take half of it, and then we square it, which gives us a positive 9. So I'm going to add a 9 here. Here's the thing. Are you ready for this? Technically, that's not really a positive 9. Because if I were to multiply this back out, what I really have here is a negative 9. So in order to balance the equation, I need to also put a negative 9 over here. So yesterday, we said, ah, plus 9, plus 9. Today, we're saying plus 9. Wait, it's really a negative 9 disguised as a plus 9. So in order to balance the equation, I need to put a negative 9 over here. So we have y minus 9 equals. Now, yesterday, we factored this over and over again. Same story today. Square root, square root, whatever that sign is there. Oops, let me move that slightly over. There you go. And so then... I do want to go ahead and move that back. You can leave it over there if you want to. You can move it back if you want to. Whatever floats your boat. But that would be the form. So make sure that that's in your notes. I'll wait for a moment to have you get it in there. All right, check and see if we still need more time. If so, press pause. All right, we are going to now look at the second situation. And here's what we have. So the first step is to move this guy over here. This is number one step, this is number two step. It is so important to make sure that you get those steps right. If you don't, well, bad things happen. So make sure that you do that. So we're gonna go ahead and move that over to the other side. And right now, I am not taking out the greatest common factor. That's not what I'm doing. What I am doing is taking out the coefficient. It's the coefficient that needs to be moved. Now, be careful. If I took a 2 out, I also need to take out a 2 here. Because if you were to multiply it back in, I do need to get my original value. Now, I take my little guy. I divide by 2. I square it. I get plus 4. So I'm adding a 4 here. But, stop, hold the presses. It's not a 4. It's really equal to an 8. And so in order to balance things, I need to add an 8 over here. Be very careful that you do that. Again, this has to come first. You may want to write that in your notes. This has to come second. You may want to write that in your notes. And you need to make sure that you are only always balancing the equation. So I end up getting y plus 6 equals 2 times square root, square root, sine of the middle. You can leave it over there, or you can move it back. So either way, my uh, vertex is here at positive 2, remember it's opposite of what's that. If my value is over here, I take the opposite, if I move it back, I just do what it says. So it's up to you what you want to do. So a quick sketch would be over 2, down 6, positive. We've got this going on here, which means there are two real roots. 